Hello everyone. So this is the coin channel here, and today for our first official coin roll hunting video, I have ourselves a $100 unopened box of nickels. Nice, unopened, and so now I'm just gonna open this up live on camera. Let's see what we got here. Looks like these shifted a bit. That's okay. But as you can see, one end here. That's a nice new one, but there's an old one. Let's take a look at another roll. So this appears to be a pretty mixed box here. See, there's another old one. So hopefully this one isn't a... Uh, new box hopefully it's a nice mixed variety so I'm gonna go ahead and begin so since this is my first video I'm gonna show you kinda like what I'm gonna do so instead of opening it up like normal I have a little special device here that's really just a staple remover I just go along the rim and pull up on the end and then I open it here and then push in on the inside and move this over there we go and so now I just push it in using any kind of device in this case sometimes I use a battery sometimes I use a marker or whatever so it looks like this one's gonna be a pretty big mix of different things so you know I just search through them and try to find coins that are good so you know that's pretty much how it's gonna work so I'll let you guys know what I find when I find them I'll turn on the camera and let you guys know alright so here's the first coin that's interesting this particular coin I can't see the date it's like the entire coin has gotten this grainy appearance to it I don't know what's up with that. It's probably just wear or possibly grease in the dye. Or it could be the dye is breaking. Showing breakage in the dye. Not sure. But yeah, really strange. Put that to the side. This is the first roll, by the way. So nothing in that first roll. However, I'll show you my sheet that I use whenever I um, coin roll hunt. I have this sheet here that I made. I basically print out everything I want to have. So in this case I'm looking for early 1960s from 1963 to 1960. 50s, 40s, which um, don't include the wartime, which were made of silver. The 3938s, the World War II silver nickels. Buffaloes, 2009 nickels, both Denver and Philadelphia. V nickels and interesting errors or foreign coins. So yeah, that's basically what I look for. So yeah, nothing on that first roll. And the last thing about the way I do it is I just open it up with um, that staple remover. And I push out with some circular rod of some kind. It could be anything, battery, or the end of a marker or something. The nice thing is that it makes it really easy to re-roll and it saves money on rolling up coins so yeah this is what I use here I just use an ordinary marker and I could just fold on fold back the other end just like that and that is finished so now move on to the next roll like so and I'll let you guys know if I find anything in any future rolls alright so in that roll I didn't find that much except for this I don't know if you can see it on camera but that is a 1941 yeah it's really hard to see on camera I gotta get better um, I gotta get a better magnifying glass and maybe a better camera even but that's a 1941 and I also found a 62 so there goes 160 and 140. Alright, so I apologize for some drop in quality. I had to figure out a better uh, camera 
So this is, ends up being a much better camera overall. This is my second camera. It makes a lot of noise though, but you can probably see the image better, the coins better. It can focus more easily. So let me try it out here. So this is 1987, and you can see it says, you can see it's 1987. Like the other one, which didn't. You can actually see it somewhat better. So I hope that's going to be better out. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to continue um, searching through this stuff. I haven't found anything in this particular role. So I'm going to keep going. So this is the next role here. Um, I don't really see much. Except the 1964 just passed by. Those are so common. I've seen found like three 1964s this entire roll here. But I did find this really nice condition coin. This is a 1959. Denver mint mark. So that's going to go into my keeps in the 1950s row on my little paper, the results. So yeah, let's keep going, see what we get. Now something that sometimes gets me is how they have those modern nickels, but they have a buffalo on the back. Sometimes I think that that's a buffalo nickel when I'm not thinking straight, then I realize it's just a modern nickel that's less than by around 10 years old. So that's always a bit of a disappointment. But yeah, there's a our first buffalo nickel, but not the buffalo nickel that comes around before the Jeffersons. So yeah, let's see what's in here. Alright, so I'm about, I've done eight rolls or so, this is my ninth roll, and I found something pretty cool. If you take a look here, that's a 2009D, which means that this is a 2009 nickel, and 2009 nickels are extremely low mintage. They didn't have many at all because that was during the housing crisis and uh, when the United States went into a recession, a kind of mini depression. And there's two varieties, the Denver and the Philadelphia. This is the Denver variety. And the Denver variety had low, very low me uh, mintage, but the Philadelphia variety had even lower mintage. So I've actually only found one Philadelphia in my entire life. So this one's pretty cool to have is another Denver to add to the collection. And I can probably make some rolls and maybe sell them for a little premium. But yeah, that's going to go with our Denver 2009 pile. Alright, so moving on to the next roll. And yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Alright, so I'm on my 13th roll here. So this one's a really strange coin. So it's like, this is the obverse here, so that's his head. But there's a really weird kind of... I don't know. It's like parts of him are, there's like his whole entire obverse is split up into several parts. One on the right, one on the top, and one on the left. One on the bottom. It's really strange. But it's all corroded and rusted, so... Yeah, interesting coin. So I'll let you guys know if I see anything else interesting or cool. Alright, so here's another interesting coin. This is on roll 15. Two rolls later. Look at that. That obverse is very, very off-center. It's about two millimeters off-center. So I thought that was pretty cool. But as always with these um, off-center things, the reverse is perfectly fine. I mean, it's centered and everything. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Alright, so I'm in roll 23 right now, of 50. And, let's see, 
I always like to pull out the dark colored ones first. So that looks a bit dark. Let's see what this one is. This one is nothing too special. It's that's really dark, but it's a 1985. So nothing special there. So let's check the other, the second dark one here. Oh, this is a good one. So if we look on the back, we got ourselves a silver nickel. As you can see, it's hard to see, but if you can, there is a letter P on top of the dome. Or at least there's a mint mark on top of it. Yeah, it's hard to see in there, but... Yeah, so I got a... Yeah, so you can see that P there. And we got, as it says, a 1945. Philadelphia, war nickel. So that's going to be 35% silver, I believe. So that's pretty cool. So we got our first war nickel. Okay. So let's check this rest of this roll just to see. Nothing there. This is 64, but that's not old enough. 64s are horribly common. They always make me annoyed because I may see a nice silver looking nickel from the rim, pull it out, and it's a 64. So it's really frustrating. There's nothing there. That was 2006. And that's 1959. It's 1959 nickel. Yep. Put that to the side. Eight. So yeah, there was one more nickel and one 1950s nickel in that lot. I'll let you guys know if I see anything else. Alright, so I looked through this roll, which was roll 24, and I found a 1953 S. A 1961 T and an, another war nickel here. So this one is 1945 Philadelphia. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm going to move on. Okay, so now I've gone to roll 32, so we're again near the end here. So I found a Canadian corn. It is a nickel. Canadian nickel. Very cool. And I also found two 40s nickels, a 1946 and 1947. So that'll be a nice addition to the collection. Alright, so, yeah, we're down to the last roll here, and, well, I just always show off what we have on the very last roll, just as a little bit of a final goodbye to this box. So, let's see if I can try to find my opener here. Where are you? There you are. Okay, so... Yeah, I've already somewhat opened this already. Um, on the front and the back, it looks like it's just an ordinary Jefferson. 
nothing too special. So this side just looks like the Monticello reverse and the modern Jefferson um, obverse. So let's go ahead and use my other um, coin removal method tool of choice. It's an ordinary battery. Um, all I have to do is just push on the end, sometimes both hands if I don't feel like it, and the coins come out. So, nice way to not have to rip open the lit wrapper and have to use some space in the trash can. And also save some money too. So, I'm just going to look through all these and see what fun. That's 2006, 2015, 07, 99. 92, 01, 13, 04, 08, 02, 2007, 76, 1, 14, 13, 84, 38, sorry about the camera, it's trying to focus everything, but so far, it looks like nothing, that's an 81, yeah, it's pretty loud, it tries to focus as best as it can to everything that's moving, just over another one, 71, 17, 2012, 2012, 92, 2015, 2008, 2013, 2002, 2007, and 2015. So that's pretty much all for the roll. So I'm going to wrap this up, show you how I fill up these coin wrappers here. I just stick it in there and just fill it up. I don't know how many people actually do this method. I think I'm probably the only person that knows about this method. Unless there's someone else out there who knows about this, then happy for you because it's pretty useful. However, uh, some people just don't have enough time to carefully and meticulously unwrap all the edges of the seal. That's alright, you know, people have some time more others than others, you know, some time sorry, I mean people have more time than others, so they maybe do this and other people don't have that time, so you know, they just go ahead and just tear it apart like normal. Now the only problem is near the end here. The end of the roll is always the hardest. I ended up ripping that entire thing to make sure it's completely up all the way. And, yeah, there we go. Grab that, that, and we're done. So, I'll go ahead and show you guys what we got. Alright, so. Here are the results of our coin roll hunting for nickels today. We got 18 early 1960s from 1963 to 1960. We got 5 1963s, 7 1962s, 2 1961s, and 4 1960s. And in the next row, we have our 1950s. We happen to have 9 of them. Going from the left to the right in the stacks are 1959s, which we have three of them, 1958s, which we have two of them, 1954s, which we have one, two 1953s, and one 1950. So our 1940s, we got quite a few here. We got 12, more than the 1950s. We got, in order, two 1949s, two 1948s, two 1947s, three 1946s, one 1941, and two 1940s. 
So now we got go down over here. We didn't get anything for the 39 or 38 spots, unfortunately. And we got ourselves two World War Silver Nickels. Both are 1945 Philadelphias. And didn't get anything for the Buffaloes or the V Nickels, unfortunately. Maybe we'll do better next time. And we have three 2009 D Nickels. Which both had, which all of them had low mintages. And of course, we got our error coins. Like this, which I suspect is an error because it is shifted. The um, front is not centered correctly. So, you know, that's something kind of significant, but not too significant. So, you know, I may put it back in my change. I'm not sure. That's still cool to have. A foreign coin, which of course was our Canadian nickel. Five cents, the beaver on the back, very nice, and of course, the lovely queen. And over here, our interesting coin is, of course, this one at the beginning. It looks like the whole obverse is into several pieces. So, yeah, it almost looks like somebody applied some kind of glue on the front. I don't know, strange. Like, you can see there's lines there line going up there up this back of his head so yeah that's kind of interesting so yeah that's pretty much all we got for today hope you found this very first cornell hunting video interesting and yeah that's what we got thanks for watching and i'll see you guys sometime soon this is the coin channel going out and also, at the end of every video of these coin roll huntings, I'll show you something from my collection. So here, this is something I just found pretty recently. It's a series, you can't see that, but it's a series 1981 $5 bill. I found this thing from getting change um, from when I went to some grocery shopping. I thought it was pretty cool, you know? You don't find something from 1981 too often. And on the back here, I also have a silver certificate so that's a bonus two things in one video what I want to show you is the reverse of that five dollar bill look at that completely different sorry about the shadow there but yeah they write out five in block letters and you get a nice view of the Lincoln Memorial on the back five dollars and yeah once again five on the other side both in nice little circles at the top. So yeah, pretty cool, I thought. Finding that in, you know, uh, your pocket change, you know, you don't expect it very often. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, you know, the serial number is kind of interesting too. 29126816. So, that's not really a special serial number, but it's pretty cool how it kind of repeats like that. I don't know, maybe it is. Let me know in the comments if you that want to tell me that it's a valuable one or not i don't know so yeah that's pretty much all i have for you guys once again hope you found that video interesting and you know subscribe if you like it and you want to be notified for every video on my channel and every upload please smack that subscribe button and hopefully i'll see you guys next time